Gurve Gora Chandra, Radhika Tadali, <coughs> Krishna, Krishna Bhaktaya, Tadu Bhaktaya, Namo, Namo, Srinandananam Bande, Radhika Chadanadvayam, Gopi Jana Samayuktam Brindavanamano Hanam, Bhakti Hina Aparada Lakshe, Chittis Chaka Madi Taranga Madhya, Kripamaitvam Saranam Prapadya Brinde Namaste Charanavim. <coughs> Bhakti Vihina Parada Lakshya Chittis Chaka Madi Taranga Madhya Kripa Maitam Saranam Prapadya Brinde Namaste Charanara Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So first of all, I have a pronounce to our Gurudev on Vishnupad Sri Simad Bhakti Vedan Narayan Gosai Maharaj all our Rupanuga Guru Parampara, all devotees, thank you for coming. <coughs> so, if this guy had stayed, we would have given a different class. Mm-hmm. But he didn't last. Mm-hmm. So, all our have heard something before. So, tonight we want to speak a little bit about from this Bhagavad Purana. Scripture is like an ocean, it's so many topics. Why so many different levels of persons, so many mentalities, so many different types of faith? So scripture gives something for everyone. But <coughs> the best, the essence of all scripture, like you churn a huge pot of milk, then the butter rises to the top. Butter is in milk, but you can't see it. So topics of Krishna are there everywhere in the Vedas. But most people cannot see. If we're in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Vedya Triguna Visayam. Most of the Vedas deal with materialistic topics, Krishna says. Astrology, how to be happy in married life, how to become free from disease, how to fulfill all different types of desires in this world and the next. So, Veda like a tree. But the essence of the tree is in the fruit. Right, Jai? Janti, right? Jai. <laughs> the essence of the tree is the fruit. If you lick the mango tree, no sweetness is there. Sweetness is there, but cannot taste. All the sweetness of the tree is where? in the fruit. So, all Vedas, like a tree. But the Srimad Bhagavatam, like the fruit. But this fruit have no skin, no seed. <laughs> means, in this Srimad Bhagavatam, the essence of all Vedic literatures, the fruit, no skin and no seed. It means, no materialistic topics. In Adavanticha, Tamanticha, Hari Sarvatra Gita. In the beginning, the middle, and the end of this scripture, there is nothing else except service to Krishna. There is no other subject matter. There is no mention of. Actually, who has qualification to hear? We see this boy even before we began, he ran. Why? Well, he thought he was nothing for me. <laughs> he was no pleasure for me. He was no enjoyment. So he ran. And that is a fact. Who can hear this topic? Only those who have given up desires for their own pleasure, their own happiness. Those who want the happiness of Krishna, they can come and they can hear. So, this Bhagavatam second verse said, what is the qualification to hear? Right, London. How many people live here? Seven million. How many are thinking, today, how can I get a chance to hear about Krishna? <laughs> One, two, three, four. And the Simon Yamuna, but they came late, so very few. Why is that if Krishna is the all attractive, the supreme relishable, you know, sweeter than the sweetest? You know? Pate Akilam Maduram. The Lord of sweetness, all sweetness come from him, but why no one is attracted? Yeah. That is the mystery. <laughs> because everyone has so many other desires. So who can hear 
that person have no desire. No? That person can hear. No? Therefore, Saraswati Thakur said, when Bhagavatam comes, the materialists run. Could they think nothing is here for me? There is no enjoyment here for me. But devotion is unlimited enjoyment. But I have to do it through the correct manner. Like I want to feed my stomach, the correct manner is not to give food to the ear or to the nose. <laughs> matter is to give to the mouth. So everyone wants pleasure, everyone wants happiness, but no one knows the proper method to get it. So like a dog chasing their tail, these people are chasing happiness, happiness, enjoyment, enjoyment, but cannot find it. But when the dog forgets about his tail and walks away, the tail follows him. So when we give up, when we just try for Krishna's happiness, all happiness chases that person. All enjoyment chases that person. So, <clears throat> we'll tonight hear a little bit from this Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. So, some people ask, we never met Krishna, how we can love him? We know our mother and father, we've met them. We know our relatives, husband, children, we have met them, we can love. How we can meet Krishna who we've never met? How we can develop love for him? Also problem comes, our mind and senses are material. In this world we develop a relationship with something, we see its material form. We hear some sound, some conversation. We touch, we smell, we get knowledge of it. Then we get a relationship. The problem is Krishna is beyond the mind and beyond the senses. He is a doxage. It means he cannot be reached by the mind or senses. Pantastakoti Satasambrama Sambhava. Brahma Lord Brahma said. Even the yogis at the speed of the mind for thousands of years chase him. But they cannot reach his toenails. <laughs> it means by big, big austerities doing all this astanga yoga, you know, like controlling the breath, controlling controlling the senses, dharana. For thousands of years they try to reach him, but they cannot be reached. He cannot be reached through yoga, this mechanical yoga process. So how can we love someone we never met, Jaya? That makes it difficult. You know? So the Vedas say, hear about him. First relationship comes through hearing. Therefore that person who develops taste in hearing, that person is most fortunate. So tonight I want to give a little talk, a little katal on this subject. Okay, just give me one minute. Therefore many people are very anxious to see Krishna. But Saraswati Thakur has said, does Krishna want to see you? <laughs> How we can see Krishna when there is something in us that he wants? So what will attract the all-attractive? What will attract Krishna to us? Jaya? That is the question. No? So what does Krishna want? What attracts him? We can attract him by beauty because he has unlimited beauty. You can attract him, cannot attract him by knowledge because he is the source of all knowledge. Krishna is Gyanmoy. Krishna's body is made of knowledge. How you can have more knowledge than him? Our body is made of stool and urine, skin and bone. So you cannot attract him by knowledge. You cannot attract him by wealth or by beauty or by high birth or by what else? Austerities, so called good qualities. Or charity, na sadhiti mam yoga, na sankhya na dharmudavas, na swadhyas tapastyago yatir bhakti mamojita. Krishna says, Udhav, I am not attracted, controlled by the yoga system, no. pranayama and all these things, asan, niya. I am not controlled by that. I am not attracted by that. No. Na sadhiti mam yoga, na sankhya. I am not attracted by philosophy, knowledge of the Vedas meditation 
by big, big donations, big, big charity. But I am attracted by one thing. Yata Bhaktir Mamojita. I am attracted by one thing. That is Bhakti. And what is Bhakti? Bhajdatu means to serve. What we have. I want to give Krishna something. Problem is, everything is his already. <laughs> what can I give him? If I'm in this house and I steal Sundaranda's banana and give to him, this has no meaning. Because his house, his banana. But one thing we have, oh, one thing we have, a mood to serve. A mood to serve. That is called Bhakti. Bhaj means to serve. We are, so we are practicing, Jai, the yoga of service. No, yoga means to join. So there are many different yogas because people want to join with many, many different things. Who wants to fulfill some desire in this world, then they'll do karma yoga. Someone who wants heavenly planets or mystic powers, <coughs> some yoga is for them also. Some people want liberation from birth and death, then gyan yoga. But there are some people who are not even interested in anything in this world. They also have no interest in liberation. Therefore, we, in this song that you sang, Bhukti Mukti Spriha. Oh Krishna, give me one thing. I want the association of that person who has no interest in material enjoyment and that person who has no interest even in liberation. Then what that person has interest in? Just in service to Krishna. Because if I can get the association of that person, then there's a chance for me. I can also develop those qualities. Everything comes by association. Everything bad that we learned in life, where did we learn it from? From someone. <laughs> Who taught you to smoke? Who taught to eat chicken? This all comes from association. In the same way, anything good we have, we also learn from someone. Therefore, all scriptures say, by association of materialists, one is destroyed. One's pure knowledge is covered. One is degraded. But by association of the great souls, then the doors of liberation open. Therefore, who is that person who will not take the association of the devotees of Krishna? Bhagavatam says, only one person will not take the association of the devotees. Only one type of person will not like to hear about Krishna. Who is that? Yeah, one who is a butcher. Butcher means meat eater, fish eater. <laughs> a meat eater is one type of butcher. Not so dangerous, that can change. But another type of butcher is one who kills themselves, their own soul, by not hearing about Krishna. So these two type of persons never interested in hearing. So, that much we can hear about Krishna, that much we get benefit, that much we get auspiciousness. So the Bhagavatam says, the sun rises and sets every day, taking away the lifespan of everyone and everything in the creation. Except the lifespan of the person who hears about Krishna. <laughs> the sun cannot touch their lifespan. The sun has no power over that person. Because they are hearing about Krishna, they are connected with immortality. Therefore, death, time, has no power over such a person. And the great misfortune, no one has interest in hearing Anyway, what can we do? Saraswati Thakur said, even if no one comes, just speak to the walls. <laughs> he said, speak to the walls. Chanting about Krishna must go on. So no one comes, just do for yourself. <laughs> speak about Krishna. Everyone is speaking, right, Jay? What they're speaking about outside? What's everyone speaking about? Any topic of Krishna? No. Everyone will talk about COVID or the government or this guy, that guy. The topic of Krishna... <laughs> No one have interest, no one has taste. So Saraswati Thakur said, only one shortage in this world, what is that? Shortage of topics of Krishna. So I want to tell this story tonight. Very sweet, very beautiful, very sweet story. Of course, because of COVID, people could not come last year. And probably this year also cannot come. But there in this one month, yeah, we visited all these places, all this... Krishna here did what? Krishna here did what? 
So in this month, Kevin coming? Try and try and see what happens. We visit all these places. Here, Krishna lifted Govinda. Sorry. Left hand. Here, Krishna took birth. Here, Krishna was tied to the grinding water. Here, Krishna stole butter. Here, Krishna did Rasulila. So in this one month, we visit all these places. Actually, before I left, Mara said, why are you going? I said, well, Kartik is coming. He said, but no one can come, so what's the use if you're going? <laughs> anyway, maybe someone have greed, some desire. I want to go, I want to go. So, there's one town. It's still there now, very ancient, called Batro. Mm -hmm. Easy way I can remember. Bat means rice. <laughs> Bat, Batro. The place of rice. If your Hindi is not so good, bat roll means like bread roll. No? Bat roll. That town is still there. So this town, that is actually it's just a village. So in time of Krishna it was quite big. But now it's just a few, few, few houses here and there. So in this village, you see, from the the town of Vrindavan, where Krishna was born, to the town of Mathura. It seems like only 10 kilometers. But Guru Mahesh says, actually, it's millions. The real distance is millions of miles in consciousness. So in this town of Batrol is in the middle. So in Krishna's village, where Krishna appeared, when we believe when Krishna came to this world, from the spiritual world, when he came in his original spiritual form, all the liberated souls right, come with him, like a package deal. So, why they come to this world? Why Krishna comes? If Krishna not come to this world, then how would we know about him? How could we hear about him if he had never come? We cannot hear about someone who never who never appeared. So, one of many reasons why Krishna comes to this material world. Can you think why? Why would Krishna come here? There's no shortage in the spiritual world. <laughs> no shortage there. No? There is millions of Lakshmi is serving him there. The dust is chintamani, like jewels. So there is no shortage of anything there. No? Why would Krishna come to this material world? So many reasons, many reasons. But one confidential reason. Anugraha Bhaktana Manusam Devasruta Bhajate Tadusa Kritva Sutva Yat Tad Paromavet Krishna said To give mercy Anugraha Bhaktana To mercy to who? To the devotees Which type of devotees? Past, present and future <laughs> Means Who came with Krishna They are called the past devotees Means eternally with him So no question of Anyway Language has a problem but those who are eternally with him or achieve perfection already and are with him, they are called devotees from the past. So when Krishna comes, he comes with them to also give them mercy. No. Why? What is their only happiness? Krishna's activities, Krishna's pastimes. So. so in this life, there are many some people who are chanting the names of Krishna, trying to follow bhakti. So if you die and you cannot achieve success, no problem. Next life, more facility is given. No? More improved body, improved chance for association, improved intelligence, improved character. No, our problem is, <laughs> my problem anyway, we're like that, the space shuttle. No? The space shuttle uses so much energy, millions of kilos of kerosene or whatever, but it just goes like one or two meters a second right? because it's just trying to get away from the gravity of the earth. So we are like that. We are doing so much energy, but all our bad habits pulling us back. But if one does nice devotion this life, next life, be born in very religious family from birth, get chance to hear. Birth can, like we had to wait 20 years before we even heard Krishna's mission. Next life, more facility. So Krishna comes for them means by some great good fortune, now they appear in the same universe where Krishna appears. They can meet him for the first time. No? See him anyway. So they are called devotees in the present. And in the future, those who will become devotees by hearing about him. 
Well, so Krishna comes for these three types of persons, three levels. No? So, in Krishna's village, they know nothing else but him. No? They are called the Nitya Siddhas. Okay? Jay, we believe, two types of souls. Those who always forget Krishna, like us, always in the, in one sense, always in the material world, always in birth, death, old age, and disease. They're called Nitya Bada, eternally bound, eternally forgetful. But all souls are not like us, thank God. There's another type of souls, always remember, never forget. They're the Nitya Siddhas. And there's a third type who did forget but now remember. But they're like the same as the Nitya Siddhas. By their grace you become like them. So these two types of souls. So when Krishna comes, he comes with the eternally perfected, the eternally liberated souls. Okay, Jay, you're following, right? This is all for you, you know? It's for Krishna. But... So now our soul, we don't, we don't know our soul. The soul's nature is now covered by this material body. Right? Skin, bone, meat, flesh, hair, mucus, all these things. So the real nature of the soul is now covered. But there is another type of soul. Their nature is not covered. Their, their original consciousness is fully manifest. So they also have a body, those souls. But that soul body, completely spiritual. The Siddha Deha, the soul's body, that is made of love of Krishna. These bodies made of attachment to material things, because this body is material. So this body is made of material attachment. Eyes doing what? Enjoying form. Nose enjoying smell. Tongue enjoying taste. Ear enjoying sound. The sense of touch enjoying this world. So the five senses just fully absorbed in this world. But them, they are not like us. They have spiritual bodies. So they are all senses only for Krishna. We cannot imagine. They, have spirit, they exist for the happiness of Krishna. Does that sound like a good life, Jaya? Existing for the happiness of Krishna? <laughs> we exist for our own happiness. But they exist? No. Their happiness is only Krishna's happiness. So chalk and cheese, heaven and hell. Where are we? And where are they? So if we can hear about their love for Krishna, this is like COVID. Where you get it from? From someone who has it. <laughs> so love of Krishna also comes from someone who has it. So try to pray to Krishna. Oh Krishna, give me mercy. What mercy? I want the association of your loving devotees. But no one praying for that, right? <laughs> no one praying, my grandmother seek help, or give me some wealth. My marriage is a disaster. I need this, I need that. No one comes to Krishna with a big shopping list. But the devotees of Krishna have no shopping list. They have only one desire. I want you to be happy. So, from this Krishna's village of Brindavan, that's where I came from yesterday. Where is Brindavan? Where is here? <laughs> anyway, so there, those devotees, this is 5,000 years ago, that time. When Krishna comes, he goes, they come, they go. Why are they doing all their activities? Just to teach this world. Christian Bhagavad Gita says, I am the father of everyone. So father, not give example, what happens to children? So Krishna, his devotee, is giving this example for us. <coughs> what, what is real <coughs> happiness? What is perfect devotion? So from Krishna's village, there are many, many different types of devotees. Some are friends of Krishna. That's a same lock the door. There are many different relations with Krishna, right? Some love Krishna like son, some like him like friend, some like master, <coughs> and some like like beloved, you know, like this world. This world is like a shadow, Jay. Whatever you find here, where does it come from? What's the source? Whatever is here is there in the source, but opposite. Like you look in the reflection, everything is there, but so this world, why there are trees here in this world? Why there are trees, cows, rivers, people? Why there's different types of love? What, what is the cause of all this? What's the basis? The basis is there. Like shadow have five fingers, why? Because the original have five fingers. 
So we believe like that. This world like a shadow, a reflection. Opposite. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about it. If you look in 15th chapter. Have you seen an upside, uh, upside down tree, Ananta? Oh, wow. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. We're just talking about greed for here. Greed for here. So, we'll leave that. So, try to hear about Krishna. Okay, I love for this for later. No. <laughs> so, the devotees who are with Krishna, the best are the gopis. No, they have so much attachment for Krishna, so much attachment. But their only desire is to give him happiness. No. For Krishna Sukhi Laka, Krishna Sukhi Lagi Matra, Krishna Say Sambhanda. Their only reason they have relation with Krishna is only for his pleasure. They never think we will enjoy his beauty. They never. Think. We cannot imagine actually their level. We cannot imagine. We go to the temple. We see Krishna. Oh, why? We think Krishna is for our enjoyment, but Krishna is not for. We cannot imagine them. Everything they do is for Krishna's pleasure. Even they eat, they decorate their bodies. Everything only for his. When Krishna sees his body, he will become happy. So, those gopis. They are the topmost of liberated souls. But they look like ordinary cowherd ladies. But they are not. Otherwise, why Brahma, why Shiva pray to their Lord? Vande, Nanda, Brajestri, Nampada, Renama, Bhiksanam, Yasam, Hari, Katod, Gitam, Punati, Bhavate, Tarayama. Otherwise, why Uddhav said? These gopis, when they speak about Krishna, Punita, Bhavati, Tarayama. When these gopis speak about Krishna, they purify the three worlds, the three planetary systems. So gopis are not ordinary ladies. Otherwise, why even Lord Brahma, why even Lord Shiva, they pray, they do pranam, they bow to their lotus feet. Not to speak of Brahma, Shiva, even Krishna. <laughs> even Krishna vows, he said. He knows they are so much higher. No? But they never misuse that. Everything that they have that power, but they never misuse, they also use that power for Krishna's pleasure. Okay. So when these gopis even though they are Krishna's energy, like Krishna's own self, still, they think we are ordinary village girls. Krishna is our beloved like this. They are not thinking Krishna is the Supreme Lord, He is God, we are His energy. They are not thinking like that. So sometimes, these village ladies, because village area means not so much available, <laughs> where you get salt from in a village area, no different types of spices, nice cloth. So these gopis would take yogurt, butter, ghee, save the cow, and they would go to the city of Mutura to exchange the milk products for what they need for everyday life, for the service of Krishna. So as they would go through towards Mutura, they would pass through this village of Batro. Even now, if you get the tempo and you go from Brindavan, you can see Tem Batro on the left side. You know? So it's like halfway point. So when these ladies would pass through, don't, when ladies get together, what they talk about, must, some discussion must be there. <laughs> no. so, but what they talk about, they have no other topic of discussion. Krishna. So when the ladies in Batrol, the halfway house, <laughs> when they would meet with the gopis who would come and go from Mathura, then they got a chance to hear about Krishna. Oh, he's so much handsome, like Cupid. Oh, so much merciful, so kind, all good qualities. Krishna's 64 qualities. So they would hear about Krishna's name, Krishna's supremely attractive form, his wonderful activities. What are our activities? God, we're so bored by our own activities. We, That's why we watch, you know, the phone. And all. We want, our life is so boring. We just want, the only happiness is watching what someone else does. That, so our, we call this pastimes, our pastime eating, sleeping, passing stools. And so. But Krishna's activities are not like that, full of knowledge, full of happiness. You know? So they would talk about Krishna's name, form, qualities, and activities. You know? Have you seen the son of Nanda? Then your eyes are useless like the eyes of a peacock feather. <laughs> peacock has so many thousands of eyes on his tail, but no value because they cannot see so the scripture says, those eyes which are not seeing Krishna, useless like eyes of peacock feather. 
Do you have a conch shell? Can you pass me? Conch shell? No, I don't. Look past. You see it there? Okay, so there. oh, that's a good one. You see, Jay, conch shell also look like he have an ear, right? <laughs> but uh, no power, no value, no? So those ears, which never heard about Krishna, like ears on conch shell. That heart or that turban, that head which not bow before Krishna, that useless also. No? So scripture talk all these hands which, if you not these hands which not serve Krishna, these like the hands of a monkey. Like scripture say many, many things. No? So they're hearing so much. Krishna is so handsome, so sweet. And they're mad with love for Krishna. No? So all ladies in this village, the halfway village, Bhatra, they're hearing about Krishna, but never met. But hearing so much. No? Then from hearing one greed comes. Why we're speaking all this stuff? We're hoping in my heart or in any one person's heart, one greed will come. Krishna is so nice, why don't I also try for him? Everything we do in life, Jay, is for greed. Why, you, why someone works, why someone wakes up, why someone has a boyfriend or girlfriend. Only greed. This will give me happiness. By this I will get some satisfaction. But is it working, Jay? Everything you're doing is to get some happiness. Are you happy? No need to answer now. We eat for our own happiness. We sleep for our own happiness. We decorate our bodies. We do work. We're doing everything for our own happiness. But do you know even one person who is happy? Have you, can you put it up your hand and say, I know someone who's always happy. Have you met anyone? Uh, yes. Yeah, no, not me. <laughs> I'm not that level, but, <laughs> but we, there are people like that, always happy, because they have no other desire except Krishna's satisfaction, Krishna's happiness. Someone just asked Didi before I came, you know, how we can get love of Krishna? She goes, only when you completely forget this world, then you can get it. You know anyone like that who has no interest in this world? No interest, because they're getting some superior taste. Krishna talk about that in Bhagavad Gita. Like, we are trying, I mean, externally anyway, giving up sex life, giving up eating so many things, no? <laughs> giving up the happiness of sleeping in in the morning. I know, so many things we are doing. No? What was the point I was talking about? Happiness. Combined happiness. That's what I'm Huh? Some ideas there. Anyway, but who we know who is really <coughs> satisfied, who is really happy? That person has no other desires. That person can taste unlimited happiness. So, uh, so they're hearing about, ah, greed, greed, greed. We're doing everything for greed. We're doing everything but <laughs> half-heartedly because still we have some desire for this and that and this and that. Even someone has a wife, still. Not the same, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Even someone has a wife, still. Looking, is there anything else? Is there something else? Some... Our hearts are not fixed in one thing. That is our problem. But Krishna has such a power. If you hear about him nicely, this greed will come. Guru Maharaj give a funny example. <laughs> There's an old man, imagine. Old. No, no teeth, no hair, no money. Dressed in rags. Completely useless. No. And he's their beggar. He's on the side of the road. And one Raj Kumari, one princess, goes past on an elephant. So beautiful. I want. He probably wouldn't say anything. I love her. I want. I want her. I love her. Is that desire illegal? Can anything stop? What is the qualification for that desire? He has no qualification. That desire itself is its only qualification. That greed. So, scripture said, "What is that? What's that verse?" Ananta, do I have to do all the thinking? <laughs> I'm still 12 hours behind. No, but it says, no, this greed for Krishna, this what is the qualification to love Krishna? This greed to attain him. So, <laughs> What is the qualification to serve Krishna? There's only one qualification. The, the, that qualification is greed. Greed has its own qualification. Greed does not depend on qualification. 
Greed depends only on itself. So why are we hearing about Krishna? We are hoping in my heart, in the heart of anyone, this greed will come. Tab tab bab adi maduja suta nadia apekshate. One who hears about Krishna's tad tad bab adi maduja, Krishna's sweetness, like we hear Krishna's so sweet, the gopis pray, why we only have two eyes? Who can see Krishna with two eyes? Dueanki kikori te pan. Who can see Krishna with two eyes? The Creator is an idiot. Why he only gave two eyes? And these eyes have eyelid, tears, many obstacles. The gopis say, next creation, give me the job. I'll do the creation nicely. I give everyone hundreds of thousands of eyes to see Krishna. One devotee, Vishwana Chakvati Pratok, he prays, I wish I had thousands of eyes to see him. He prays, thousands of ears to hear about him. Thousands of tongues to chant his name. Thousands of forms to hurt, to serve him. Thousands of hands to clean and cook. Thousands of legs to walk to the holy places. And we're thinking, why Krishna gave me this one? <laughs> So devotee have so much greed because Krishna is unlimitedly sweet. So by hearing about Krishna, Jay, we don't know your good fortune. Maybe greed comes. I tried everything else. Why did I not try for him? And this greed, this desire, it cannot be attained by millions of lifetimes of other activities. Feeding the homeless, <laughs> giving charity, being very honest, being very clean, very truthful. Millions of lifetimes you waste your time in austerities, sense control, celibacy. But that greed will never come by these ordinary material activities. There's only one way this greed can come. What is it, Jai, for the gold medal? Hearing. Hearing. That's why hearing is so important. Gudeda said, let them have thousands of faults. I never care for that. But let me look at one thing, how much they have greed to hear. That is the one qualification of the devotee. Devotee may have millions of faults, <laughs> but really these faults cannot really touch them, no? like dust, dust on a piece of gold. No. Someone have all qualities but not greed to hear about Krishna. We consider all those so-called qualities useless. <coughs> so she says, like ornaments on a dead person. Right? I want you to judge. She's new. Imagine poor old Asim died. No? Just so. Huh? Anyway, just some. Imagine some lady died, some young, someone's daughter. They washed the body, put lipstick in, nice earrings, mascara, what do you call rouge, nice beautiful dress, paint the toenails, nice jewelry. Question comes: Anyone who sees that dead body, will they feel happy? Will that dead body feel any happiness? So a prana seva dehasa lokana yivaranjana. Someone have all qualities, truthful, high family, very clean, very sense controlled, very celibate, honest, poetic, expert, everything, but no interest in hearing. Scripture said that person's are like the ornaments on a dead body. So stupid. That's why no one comes for the <laughs> hearing this, everyone. What? What? I wasted my whole life. Everything I did has no value because I didn't hear about Krishna. Chill out. No, but we have to strongly believe. That's why I want to tell this story tonight. No. So just have faith in one thing. By hearing, I can achieve perfection. That strong faith is ne nothing else is necessary. No, nothing else is necessary. Do you know, Pro you've heard of Prabhupada, right? Have you heard of him? Right. So he was many years with his guru before he took initiation. No? They were doing Brajmanu Parikram. And everyone went to um, Sheshai, one nice holy place. There is thousands of footprints of Krishna in the stone. Can you imagine? No? When Krishna played his flute, it's so sweet, even the stone melt. Krishna's footprints, all the footprints of the friends and cows. And you can go there, you can see like witness. No, did he say this place like Praman, what do you say? Proof. Oh. Yes. Krishna was here, there is the footprint. So everyone went to see this place, but and he didn't go. He said, oh, Gurudev is speaking something. Let me hear. So everyone went then. Bhakti said, answer us what he talked with. Yes. I have marked him. What's the word? I marked him. I marked him. He does not run away. He likes to hear. That was his... He said, that was my qualification. I like to hear. Of course, the ideal is <laughs> hearing then what you hear, you practice. 
But anyway, hearing has its power. So these ladies just hearing about Krishna. You know, who from? Those who love Krishna already. So just by hearing, they fix their minds on Krishna. You know, just by hearing. When can we meet? How can we meet? You know, this desire like a ghost. <laughs> always restless, always thinking of Krishna. They're doing all household jobs. Cleaning, taking care of husbands, kids, all this. But their minds, their hearts, not there. Their minds and hearts, not in their body. Their minds and hearts, where? With Krishna. So we have to be like that. Actually, Mahaprabhu was celibate, like so strict. He never hear a name of woman. No. But he gave a enough, nice example how we should be like a, ve like a married woman who has a boyfriend. Like a married woman. Now it's different these days. But a married woman who's at home, she's very nicely serving husband and <laughs> cleaning and taking. But her mind is not there. Where's her mind? So we should be like that. Doesn't mean... <laughs> <laughs> it means this world we have many things to do. Do! But your attachment should not be there. Okay. So... So, Krishna at that time was lucky. Krishna was there. And every day Krishna do his activities. What's the eternal activity of Krishna? Cowherd grazing. Krishna goes cow grazing. <laughs> Madhusudama says, so funny. Every other incarnation has many, many responsibilities. Right? We believe Krishna is the source of all incarnations, right? And unlimited incarnations are there. So, Madhusudama says, no. All incarnations have so much responsibility. Right? Lord Vishnu is in charge of the creation, so he's there like, you know, Paramatma, Kiridaksavi, he's making charge and everyone gets the result of their past life activities. He's in charge of that. You know, Mahavishnu is in charge of creating millions and millions of universes. You know, Lord Ram's in charge of responsibility, for establishing Dharma, religion, and destroying non devotion. Every incarnation has so many responsibilities. But what question comes, what's Krishna's responsibility? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> That's why he's so happy. <laughs> he has no responsibility. He has no tension. He has no worries because everyone else is doing everything. He gave, you do that. I'm busy here. Doing what? Cow grazing. <laughs> Cow grazing. Means enjoying. There was one Muslim king, Akbar famous. He was Muslim, he controlled North India, but he was a very liberal person. Very liberal. He not like tortured Hindus and all that stuff. He was very liberal. So he said to the Brahmanas, the Hindus, make a religious presentation. I want to know what is Hinduism. So they all got busy here then, made all different types of dramas and presentations, and he was looking at them. Who is this? Durga. What is her job? Oh, she's the external energy, the material energy. Why she has eight hands, these are anyway like this explaining. Okay, Who that? That's Surya, Sun God. Wow, what's his job? Oh, okay, he's doing that. Right. You know the nine planets, Navagraha, have you heard like Mars, Saturn, all astrology people all into this. What influenced Mars and Sunny, right? The guy who just left. He's fasting for Saturn. Why? Anyway, Saturn doing this. He's looking at all this presentation. Who's that? Lord Vishnu, what he's doing, he's maintaining the universe, right? Then there was Krishna. And Akbar said, I believe this must be the topmost. Why? You're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> you have no responsibility. You have no headache. No. You do that. Like Bill Gates. You think Bill Gates is doing... He probably hasn't touched a computer for years. Bill Gates, right? What's he doing? You think he's there coding and all that stuff? Forget it. He pays someone else to do it. Like someone said to Henry Ford, who was complete, I think he was a, almost illiterate. Now you are so much wealthy, you should get a degree, get an education. He said, why bother? If I want a PhD, I just buy it. Hey, you, work for me. I got my PhD. <laughs> so, listen, to me. Krishna's like that. <laughs> you do. Krishna gives his power, you do. Of course, he's God, so he's also controlling everything, but he also, in another sense, mischief. Therefore, Rupa Goswami says, what is the highest form of Krishna? That is Lalit Madhav. What are the qualities of Lalit Madhav Krishna? No tension. <laughs> no tension. Nischind means he's not worried for anything. No? 
mischief. What's he doing all day? Party house, joking, laughing, mm -hmm. enjoying. No mischief. What's he doing? Being controlled by the beloveds. That's his pastime. So Agba, he looked. He said he saw everything, and he was very intelligent. Agba. He said, I accept this as the topmost. Why? No responsibility. He is only enjoying. This is this must be the topmost. Like Nietzsche, one philosopher, what's his name? Nietzsche. 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 Funny, because in Hindi, Nietzsche means low class. Nietzsche. He said, I only believe in a God who dances. Who's that? Krishna. <laughs> of course, he was probably not so lucky to. He could not hear about it. Anyhow, so Krishna, no responsibility, no headache. What's he doing? Just absorbed and enjoying. Absorbed and enjoying. This looks like selfishness, but Bhagavatam says, no. Mad Bhakti Vanodatam. Everything Krishna do is for the happiness of the devotees. Everything. And everything the devotee does is for the happiness of Krishna. Therefore, there is no selfishness, no lust, no fault. This is pure love. Krishna do everything only for the devotee, and the devotee do everything for him. So Krishna came with his millions of cows. These cows are not ordinary. They are surabis, pramadenus. They have unlimited milk, but nobody needs anything. Whatever desire you have, they give you. But nobody needs anything in Vrindavan because they have Krishna. So they just milk and drink. You know? So Krishna enjoying. Thousands of friends, millions of cows. You know? So we can talk about that tomorrow. Maybe. So Krishna going different forests, different forests with all cows. You know? And all forest animals also, they also exist only for him. They also have spiritual bodies. Even trees are devotee trees. When Krishna walks under them, they feel so much happiness. They weep. This is honey. No? When Krishna moves, they move their branches like fan. When Krishna walks under them, they drop flowers. Jai, we believe this is the concept of spiritual life. Everyone and everything for the supreme center. Everyone working in harmony because everyone wants Krishna's happiness. In the material world, no harmony because everyone wants their own happiness. So everyone in competition with everyone. Lust, envy, greed, all these things. But there, only, there's only one enjoyer. Who's that? Krishna. Ready to accept that, Jay? There's only one enjoyer? Mm -hmm. If you're not jealous of Krishna, then you can accept it. Yes. Fair enough. I agree. <laughs> I surrender. I also will work for your happiness. Mm -hmm. And you don't agree? Oh, why should he be the only enjoyer? What about me? Then what happens to you? Then you come to London. <laughs> <laughs> That's why God makes the material world. The souls who do not want to cooperate in the program, those who don't want his happiness, they come here for their own happiness. So, Krishna goes every day, different forests, 12 main forests are there, Maruvan, Talvan, Kumudvan, Belvan. East side is seven forests, and this west side is Four, five, and so many little upavan small forests. We visit all every year. No? If you come there, really, I lost my heart in Vrindavan. So Krishna also lost his heart there because so attractive, so beautiful. No? So, but one day, what happened? Krishna went this way <laughs> with all boys and cows, and all the mothers who remain in the village, they're thinking. Everyone is thinking Krishna is my son. So that every day cooking so many things for Krishna in the forest. They give to their sons, and no need that their sons know this is for Krishna. He will enjoy my mother's cooking. In this world, a woman, a son can only have one mother. But there, Krishna is the son of everyone, the beloved of everyone. So Yoga Maya arranged. Krishna went one side. All lunches went at that time, no Facebook or SMS, so some miscommunication. All boys and every Krishna and Balaram went this side, <laughs> and all lunches went another side. So, Krishna and Balaram, everyone's hungry. So one day, all the boys said, Rama, Rama, Mahabaho, Krishna, Dustanivahana, Esavai, Bhattatek, Sunna, Tachshantim, Kartam, Atata. All boys complaining. <laughs> Krishna, O Ram, O Balaram, Krishna's brother. We are very, very hungry. And we heard you killed big demons, so please kill this demon. They are joking with Krishna. Krishna said, what demon? I cannot see any demon. He said, this demon is invisible. Where he lives? In our stomachs. 
What's his name? Hunger. It means indirectly, long way. We are hungry. And because you are a friend and you're the same as us, you must also be hungry. So Krishna, you make some arrangement for our, our lunch. So Krishna said, okay, I have nothing, no pockets. You see, Krishna has no quota, no pockets, nothing, no bank account, everything for the devotees. So Krishna says, oh, nearby is the village of Batro. If you go there, I know, you can beg for some food. You can beg for something. So Krishna said to some boys, you go there and ask. Please, we are very hungry. We are small boys in the forest. Please give us some foodstuffs. So the boys went to the village of Batro. So in that village was Brahman village. You know Kanta? Kanta? Her husband from there, he also Brahman. So still that village like that a little bit. So all Brahmanas were doing big sacrifice. You know fire sacrifice? But they desire, they're not doing fire sacrifice for Krishna. They're doing, I want to go to heaven and heavenly planets and enjoy there. So it's some material desire. So there's a rule, if you're doing some puja, some worship, <coughs> you cannot speak to anyone. Like if you're serving the deities or you're chanting mantra, if someone speaks to you, you cannot answer. Otherwise your meditation, your thing is broken. But if Krishna comes and knocks on your door, hey, <laughs> I see him, what are you going to do? Hey, okay. No, you give up your so-called meditation and you're gone. Some big person comes, you give up what you're doing because you're little, your thing you cannot achieve perfection by that alone. Some big person come, what you're doing, you give up and you go and satisfy them. Right. So in this way, the boys asked. All the brahmanas were chanting mantras and putting oblations of ghee and grains into the yagya. We want this, we want that. They're chanting the mantra, perfect pronunciation, everything. And the boys, nearby, what did they say? Krishna said, you go nearby this village and there in the name of Balaram you ask for some donation of food. You know? So the boys went and they prayed to the Brahmanas who were chanting mantras. Hey Bhumi Devata Shrutva, oh earthly gods Shrutva, please hear us. You know? Krishna Siddhesha Karina, <coughs> we have not come here for ourselves. Krishna mm -hmm. Adesha, Krishna Desha Karina, we have come here on the order of Krishna. We are not some independent guys just filling our stomach. Krishna has ordered us. No. So, Praptam, Janita, Padram, you are very gentle, kind, you know all religion. No. So, please give us some foodstuffs. But these Brahmins did not know who is Krishna. Krishna is just some <laughs> coward boy, some low class fellow moving here and there in the forest. Why we should give up our meditation, our worship, for this fellow? Again and again the boys request for those brahmanas whose hearts were full of other desires not heard anything. They not paid any attention. So the boys were sad and they went back. How was it, Krishna said? Not so great. And they were depressed. Then Krishna smiled. Because a beggar cannot expect anything. <laughs> a beggar cannot ex or demand you give me this. No. So Krishna explained, begging is like that. No? Sometimes you get, sometimes you don't get. But you can't be like this. No? So, you go again, but this time don't go to the men. Don't go. They cannot hear anything. They have too many other desire. Guru Maharaj said, too much earwax. Too many other topics, too many other thoughts. They cannot hear anything. But you go again, but this time don't go to the men. You go to the ladies. You go. And what do you say? I'm just very quickly going through this. <coughs> the coward boys also gave big lecture to the men. <laughs> they also know everything. But they could not understand. Me. So, Krishna said, Mam kenapa patni bya. Patni bya means wives. You go to the wives again. Sasam kashan agatam dasyanti kamam anam. Anam means rice. Snigna maya usabiga. These wives are different. Why? They heard about them. Their intelligence resides in me. Right? Jay, if we take an examination of our daily thoughts, where is our intelligence residing? <laughs> like monkeys we are. No? <laughs> where is some, something to eat? Where is something to enjoy? But their intelligence only on me, nothing else. No? So, 
The boys went again to the ladies. Oh, no. Oh, ladies, the oh, wives of the Brahmins. Here are words. Krishna is nearby, and we are coming from him. He has come a long way with the other coward boys as well as Balaram. Now he is very hungry, so please feed him and us. Package deal, right? So please feed him. Krishna is hungry. No? So, should, should for Achutam. Upayatam. These ladies always hear Achuta is the name of Krishna. Krishna has millions of names. Right? One name is Achuta. Achuta means cannot be reached by the material senses. Achuta, beyond the creation, beyond matter. So, Shrutva Achuta. Someone who is beyond matter, how can you reach him? <laughs> by hearing. So, Shrutva Achuta. Upayatam. No? These ladies had so much eager to see Krishna because always hearing about him. As soon as they heard Krishna has come nearby, imagine how they felt. So happy. So blissful. So actually they felt so much ecstasy, they become stunned like puppets. Then the boys, oh no, they're also not answering us. At first the boys thought, no, they're also ignoring us. But the ladies, when they heard, they closed their eyes, fully absorbed in thinking of Krishna, that's why they not spoke to the boys. No? So, <coughs> when the ladies heard Krishna is nearby, he is very hungry, what we're doing. So they had cooked many, many preparations for this fire sacrifice of their husbands. They should not do this. I mean, I should. Thunder, <laughs> thunderbolt. <laughs> should not, general rule is you should not do this. Wife, what husband wants, have to do all that stuff. General rule. Maybe <laughs> I shouldn't speak these things in England. But anyway, general rule. So, these foodstuffs all cooked for the fire sacrifice. But the ladies thought, what's the use in that when Krishna is nearby? No? Because one name of Krishna is Yagyas. Krishna is the Lord of all Yagya, sacrifice. No? So all this is actually for him. But indirectly giving, when Krishna is not present, then you can do by fire sacrifice. No? Fire, like his represent, representative, Yagya Purush. But when Krishna personally present, who cares about that? <laughs> right? Forget it. Like, you know, the, in Australia we have the... Governor General, he's the representative of the Queen. They say. But when the Queen's there directly, who has to go through the Alternative General? You go directly to the Queen. So when Krishna not personally present, okay, then Yagya and Mantra and these other things. But when Krishna personally present, who's going to do all that stuff? So the ladies immediately, Krishna was hungry, all these foodstuffs, which they were going to give to the Yagya and then to the husbands and all guests and all relatives, they just took everything. They fill hundreds of bowls full of all the sabjis, rice, nectar drinks, all preparation, all baked things, fried things, everything they took. Some in gold bowls, silver bowls, crystal bowls. And like the ocean, like the river runs to the ocean, many obstacles are there, like trees, river banks, bridges. But when river is in flood, nothing can stop it. It breaks everything. So in this world is many obstacles, relatives, this body, mind, senses, society. But when devotees have so strong attachment to Krishna, this is like river and flood. Nothing can stop. Their husbands, relatives, hey, don't go. Your husband said tonight, don't go. He did. <laughs> <laughs> don't go. This is all for me. The husband, the men, the men were thinking, this is all food, everything, this is for me. Why are you taking it for Krishna? They become angry. The wife, these wives also for me. They become angry. Why are the wives going to now for Krishna's service? So in this world, when you try and serve Krishna, obstacle will be there. No? You cannot avoid. So, but when the river is in flood, nothing can stop. So they, like a lion, full of carrying so many balls, food. Their relatives, husbands, shame on you, shame. You, know, you are Brahmanas, like high class family. You are disgraced to your family. If you go there, we never let you back. Now it's easy, you can just go and get some money from the government, wife can get another place. But that time in Vedic culture, you go, gone, don't come back. And the father also will never have that woman who leaves her husband, Indian culture, very strong. I won't talk about too much, otherwise <laughs> some other idea, but very, now we cannot imagine. You go means gone, you never come back. Husband shouting, you go, you don't come back, all relatives, shame. But they not heard anything, so much greed. What happened will happen. 
we will get Krishna. So they ran. And what they saw then is famous verse. God has a form. You know that, Jay? God is not just a light or an energy or an all-pervading nothing. He's a person. And that form is supremely attractive. Supreme, they saw him face to face. Shan't be like you go any Christian church, there's no picture of God. Mm. Right? Sad. How can you love someone unless you can serve them? If God has no body, you cannot serve him. But his body, Krishna's body, fully spiritual. In this world all bodies are materials. And we hear about body and we think, oh. like someone who's never seen a, a zebra. <laughs> How do you explain to a guy who's never seen a zebra what a zebra is? Or a hippopotamus. Imagine someone never seen a hippopotamus. How do you explain to them what a hippopotamus is? It's like a huge pig, but you know. <laughs> so we hear Krishna has a body. We have material experience. We use that to measure Krishna. How can God have a body? Because all bodies have a beginning. All bodies have a cause. All bodies are limited by time and space. God cannot have a body. He must be all-pervading like a light or an energy or something. This is all material intelligence based on material experience. We have no experience of spiritual form. There's a great error, Jay, to think that spirit has no form. Matter has form, which is inferior. Why? Spirit will have no form. Therefore, okay? So, anyone have to hear a lot. <coughs> Krishna has a body, but that body is not material. No old age for him. Right? Eternally 16 years, 8 months, 2 weeks old. I think eternal age of Krishna. If you go on Google tonight, you can see a picture of old Krishna, white hair Krishna, wheelchair Krishna, <laughs> walking stick Krishna. Always youthful, eternal. Even though he's the oldest, he's eternally youthful. So they saw him. Dark blue. So handsome, dark blue, like a sapphire, like an emerald, like a blue lotus. So many thousands of descriptions. <coughs> he had a garland, not like this one. Five different types of flowers down to his knees. And he wore a peacock feather in his head. And what's he decorated with? Just from the forest. Some trees, some sprouts, mineral, some mango flowers like this. You know? He was dressed just like a dancer. So attractive, so sweet. He was resting his hand on one friend, and in his other hand he had a flower. He was spinning, like a churning rod. Guru I said, like, the man churns, the lady actually, churns, milked and the butter comes. Krishna with the flower like this, churning the hearts of those thousands of ladies by his beauty. You know? He had some lilies in one ear. You know? His hair was very long, hanging down over his cheeks. And his lotus face was smiling, always smiling. Mother Sudama said, even Kuruchetra, Krishna surrounded by blood and dead elephants and everything. But Krishna always smiling, never unhappy, never disturbed. Mm -hmm. So, for a long time, Priyasrutva, for a long time these ladies had heard about him. And their glories had become like earrings, like an earring is always there. The glories of Krishna are always in their ears. It means always hearing. Their minds were absorbed only in Him. So when they saw Him, they thought, oh, now we got Him finally. They, Krishna entered the ears, they closed their eyes so He could not escape, and He went in their heart. Then, then Krishna could not come out of their heart, therefore they closed their eyes. And it's so much happiness in just thinking of. So this situation was there. For a long time they had been waiting when we will see Him, when we will get Him. So all this pain also evaporated then Krishna knows everything. So he's very happy. And he said, Swagatam va mahabhaga. Funny. Asatim karavindakim. He knows everything, but he's very tricky. Krishna is a big cheater also. Be careful, Jaya. Very tricky. <laughs> Guru Mahaj would say sometimes, very crooked he is. So very crooked. But that crookedness is very sweet also. So Krishna spoke. So people keep their intentions hidden, so Krishna wants to know what's inside. He knows, but like this. So, Swakatam Va Mahabhaga. Oh, great ladies. Mahabhaga means great fortunate ladies. Very fortunate. Kuro King Kuro Me. 
Kim Koromiva, right? Why have you come here? <laughs> well, why have they come? What? For him, but Krishna speaking like this. Welcome, welcome. Why have you come here? What can I do for you? You have come to see me is very appropriate. Why? Expert persons know I am person's real self-interest. Think about that. Why would Krishna... God has everything. What does he need from you? Does he need your rice? And who do you cook for, Jay? Let me go back here. Who do you cook for? You cook for yourself. This is not good. All spinach, all rice belongs to who? Whose creation is it? So it's actually his thing. So everything should be for him. We believe like that. Everything, all souls, all material things, it's all for Krishna's service. But don't think Krishna must be very greedy why he needs these things. <laughs> he don't need anyone or anything. One quality of Krishna, God, he don't need anyone or anything. He's fully satisfied in himself. When all the creation is destroyed, does Krishna feel any loss? Fully satisfied. Atmaram. Krishna means, Atmaram means he does not need anyone or anything for his happiness. And Aptaka means he has no desire. Then if he has no desire, why should we cook and feed him? Why should we serve him? Then why Krishna will accept it? He doesn't need it. Why does he accept it? Because he's very kind. <laughs> very kind, very massive. Like, we cook a preparation. For, does Krishna need my spaghetti? Does he need my spaghetti? Why will he accept it? Because he's kind. Like the small child gives on Christmas Day, he gives something to the parents. What do the parents do? This is stupid. I have millions of things like that. What? Are, oh, so nice. Because out of kindness, affection for the child, the parents accept. Then child becomes happy. So Krishna accepts something not for his happiness, for the happiness of the devotee. Okay. So, but Krishna is very tricky. He's speaking all these things. No? Expert persons know that service to me is for that person's self-interest, not for mine. No. Why? Because I am soul of the soul. So I am most beloved of everyone. Anyway, it's a long story, but Krishna spoke. Now that you have come, very good. But you should go back to your husbands. They need your help in finishing. <laughs> they need your help in finishing the sacrifice. Return home. Return home. When the Krishna was testing them, and those ladies, you know, to get a fragrance, sometimes you have to do crush something, you know, like a rose, so much fragrance. But you crush a little in your hand, then so much fragrance comes. I'm not saying Krishna is crushing anyone, but I'm just giving an example. You know? Krishna want to know what's in their heart, how to become more strong, how to become more attached. So Krishna spoke in such a way it looked like neglecting, but actually he's not. <coughs> so when these ladies heard, Krishna said, "Go back, go back." Then they began weeping so much. No, we cannot go back. We cannot go back. And big topic was there. Our husbands, fathers, sons, relatives, brothers, they will not they will not take us back. Huh? They will not take us back. We have fully surrendered to you. We have fully offered ourselves to you. Please fulfill our desire. I cannot explain everything tonight because Guru Maharaj said why Krishna sent those ladies back and why they went back. <coughs> when the gopis came to Krishna when he played his flute, Krishna said exactly the same words to the gopis. Go back, your husbands are there. And Krishna said much more to the gopis. No. Even if the husband is like deformed, even the husband is poor, low class or stupid, <laughs> or all of the above, <laughs> still, all scriptures say, wife should still serve him not give him up. The woman who gives up her husband unnecessarily, or even with some cause, then this life she not achieve perfection. Next, Krishna spoke many, many words to tell them to go back to their husbands. But the gopis not returned. Many, many words they gave Krishna an answer, and they defeated him. You know? Guru Mahārāj would say, you know? the gopis say, Krishna, you're giving us so many religious instructions. That means you are our guru. And all scriptures say, even before serving God, we should serve Guru. 
So we will not go back to our husbands. We will stay here. We will satisfy you. And Krishna, okay, take that, take that. he accepted. But these ladies, he said the same thing, and the ladies returned. So some big differences there between the gopis and these ladies. Guru Mahal said, why are these ladies still some attachment, something? Still they had some attachment, not fully perfect for Krishna's service. But next life, they would take birth as perfected souls. But still some imperfection. Like Guru Mahal said, if you take an avocado and it's green and hard, how you make it ripe? Huh? If you put in a if you put it in a warm place, a mango or avocado quickly becomes ripe. So in order to create some heat <laughs> to burn away whatever little desires they had, Krishna spoke like this. But we cannot explain everything in one life. No. So the gopi is not returned, but these ladies returned. I mean something they still had return tickets. <laughs> still some return tickets. So anyway, Krishna said, for you to remain in my bodily association would not be proper. I would be criticized and you would be criticized. Shradvada, dashana, dhyanat, my bhav, anukitanat. Love for me is not achieved just by being with me. <coughs> Love for me is achieved by hearing, remembering, and meditation. No. So the ladies gave all their foodstuffs to Krishna. Krishna ate everything very happily. They returned back home, the ladies. And the husband had said, never come back. But when they came back, the husband's hearts had fully changed. Let's see what happens to that. The husband's hearts had fully changed. No? So what happened? Evam lila naravapu nirloka manusilana. So when they came back, their husbands had had a change of heart because their wives were fully absorbed in serving Krishna. They had attachment to their wives, so this connection had come to them. So therefore their minds had changed. The husbands now came to their senses. What, what are we doing? What are we doing? The Supreme Lord came to our village, <laughs> deceptively appearing as a human being. If Krishna walked in here now, what would you do? Would we recognize him as, would we have the vision to see who he is? Who's this black guy? I wonder if he even has a visa. Here. <laughs> what would we see? Therefore, to see Krishna is not enough. One has to see him by proper hearing. So these Brahmanas saw Krishna, but not understood nicely who he was, because they had not heard about him. So, the Brahmas began thinking, what we're doing? This big, big fire sacrifice, at the end of the day, where it goes? Krishna. And who gives the result anyway? Krishna. So, he is the mantra, he is the offering, he is the sacrifice, he is everything. And he personally came and we could not recognize him. What have we done? We have done big fault, big mistake. So, but look at our wives. And wives had come back after just having lunch with Krishna. Imagine how full of ecstasy they were. Complete, now by Krishna's glance, almost purely spiritual body. Imagine how they looked at it. So where are we? And where are they? And then two very beautiful verses they spoke. So, dig janma yastri vidyate. Dig bratam, dig bahugyatam. Three births we have. One is by mother's womb or egg <laughs> if you're a chicken or something three births first is by womb egg okay I'll just stick to womb <laughs> first birth is by womb we come out of our mother's womb that is first birth second birth is diksha when proper guru gives initiation second birth we consider but the third birth is when one gets real transcendental knowledge of one's eternal relationship with the supreme lord so the Brahmanas said, Dig Janma Yastri Vidat Are three births useless? <laughs> they took all a month through everything, but no proper benefit, not achieve the result. So are three births useless? Dig Bratum, Dig Bahugyatum. Brat means austerities. No. 
like to do yagya than so many austerities. But that's useless. Gyat bahu gyat from our knowledge. They have oceanic knowledge of the scriptures and all mantras, but useless. Dikulam dig kriya daksham. Dikulam means our birth in a very exalted Brahminical family, useless. Dig kriya daksham. Expertise in all kriya means all activities, useless. Why? Vimukti yetea doksaja. We are against Krishna. Vimuk means he came, but we turned our face away from him. Like your friend, right? As soon as topics of Krishna come, turn his face. This is called Bairmuk. No interest in Krishna's service, turn your face. So, yatir Bhakti, Yatir, what did they say? They say, Vimuk yetea doksaja. We have no love for him, no devotion for him. So our high birth, our knowledge, our austerities, everything we did, useless. But, Nunam Bhagavato Maya Yoginam Api Mohini. We were bewildered by his Maya, his illusion. We could not understand him nicely. As Brahmanas, we are meant to be guru of society, but we failed. We are bewildered about the goal of life. But, oh, Pashyatanarina, but just see these ladies, you know, these women. Krishna, Api Krishna, Jagat Guru. They have developed pure love for Krishna. Who is Krishna? Jagat Guru, the Guru of the entire universe. Durant Bhavam, Durant Bhavanam Yo. This love of Krishna is so rare, so difficult to achieve, but they got it. Mitu Pasham Grihavitam. They are broken. The chains of birth and death. Attachment to wife and children. This is the chain which binds us birth after birth. But they broke it. Don't go. Cello. They broke they broke the chain of birth and death. So Nasam Dvijanti Samskara. How they got love of Krishna. And we did not. So listen Keb. I try to say in a diplomatically and politically correct way, but because I'm Australian I probably won't manage it. <laughs> so little Difficult to explain this thing sometimes, no? Nasanam dvija sa samskara. No? Sam dvija. Dvija means we took upanayan, we took diksha, we took brahmatred, we do the yagya, we do all these things. Samskara. Our wives did not. Wives not doing yagya and all these things. They're helping and everything. But Brahman only has qualification by birth, material birth, to do all these things. So nasam dvija samskara. Only we have right for all this fire sacrifice and mantras and these our lady our wives not. So they not have this thing, high birth and all this knowledge. No, they're not qualified for that. Nani Vasu Guru Api. They never lived with the Guru and studied Sanskrit grammar and the chanting proper pronunciation of the mantras. They never do that. No ladies what like when the young protected by the husband, then they're married, then they serve their husbands, right? In the Vedic culture, they said that's what they do. They never went to the Guru, they never went to the Guru Kul, they never studied all of it, but we did. Natapo Natmami Mangsa. Those ladies, they are not doing big austerities or big discussion of philosophy. No. Na Sochum Na Kriya Subham. They don't know all these like auspicious activities like we are doing. Na Sochum. They're not like so much clean like us, like so many mantra chanting and all this taking bath three times a day. They're not doing all these rules and regulations. No. Tatapi hi utama, but, tatapi means but, tatapi hi utama shloka, but they got love of Krishna and we didn't. <laughs> no. Krishna yoga sweswari. Who is Krishna? The Lord of the yoga system. They got him. We did all this, but didn't get him. And they did none of this and got him. No. Bhakti Dridacha Chasmakam. They have fixed faith in Krishna. Chasma. What is it again? Bhakti Drida. Drida means unflinching, unbreakable attachment to Krishna. Shangshka Adhyatma Kamapi. And we did not. If what I'm saying in a simple way. Material things, all other processes have some qualification. Like unless you're an accountant can't get a proper job right as an accountant. Unless you do a law degree, you can't become a lawyer. Unless you do a medical degree, you can't become a doctor. Right? Unless you're a little healthy and strong, you can't do yoga. Unless you're wealthy, you can't give charity. Right? But bhakti is not dependent on all these things. What's the qualification of devotion? Hearing. So these brahmanas never heard. 
They have so much material qualification, but no proper result. And these ladies, like, what did they do? They just heard from high-class devotees, and they got that thing which the brahmanas could not imagine. So these two verses are very powerful. Those brahmanas lament and cry. We have everything material, everything proper, but we couldn't get love of Krishna. And our wives, like sort of unqualified, but they got the highest thing. So those brahmanas lamenting. No. So, what we are completely attached to our household activities, the brahmanas, the men are saying. We have deviated completely from the goal of life. And just see. We were bewildered. Who is Krishna, the Lord of Liberation? But he came begging to our house and gave me something to eat. We could not understand him. Why the goddess of fortune? She's called Sri Lakshmi. Everyone wants wealth, prosperity. Sri, what do they call Sri? Sampati, Samrida. Everyone wants auspiciousness. Everyone wants wealth. Everyone wants health. Everyone wants good. So her name is Sri, the goddess of fortune. Mm-hmm. The goddess of fortune, what she's always doing? Serving Krishna's lotus feet. Mm-hmm. So, the goddess of fortune worships Krishna's lotus feet. That means Krishna has no shortage, because all prosperity is serving him. <laughs> so, the Brahma is confused. If the goddess of fortune serves Krishna, why Krishna come to our house asking for a few handfuls of rice? We could not understand. We were bewildered. We were bewildered. Actually, everything, all aspects of the sacrifice is Him. He is the auspicious place. He is the time. He is all the paraphernalia. He is the mantra. He is the hymns. He is the ghee. He is the demigods. He is the Lord of sacrifice. He is the offering. He is the result. And He came personally, <laughs> and we ignored Him. <laughs> So they're lamenting, weeping. So Tasmai Namo Bhagavati, we offer obeisances to that Supreme Lord. Krishna Aya Kunta Medasa. He is never bewildered. We are always bewildered. We are confused. We could not understand what is our real benefit. We are just moving on the cycle of birth and death. Savaina Adya Purusha. We could not understand if he is the most ancient person. We hope he will forgive us. <laughs> On thinking of their bad activity, they lamented so much. And Krishna was still nearby, just finishing off the last few kachoris and samosas. But still they did not go to him because they were afraid. If someone tells Kamsa was the king of that area, and they are working for him, doing all this sacrifice for the king, and the king hated Krishna, so they thought, Krishna is nearby, we can go to him. But... If someone gives a report that we went there, then the king will throw us from his employment, then we'll lose everything. So even though they knew everything, still they did not go. Oh. No, they were fearful of the servants of Kamsa. Anyway. So this little called the Krishna giving mercy to the wives of the Brahmanas. So every morning we sing Jaya Dvija Patni Jaya Naga Kanyagam Bhakti Te Jahara Poilo Govinda Chara. Every morning we see them. We give pranams to these wives, these wives of the Brahmanas, and also to the wives of Kalia. Why? They got Krishna's lotus feet by devotion. Sometimes people cannot understand. We are from Western background. So that means we are outside Vedic culture. So many people not accept, oh, you are outside Vedic culture, how can you do Krishna Bhakti? But Krishna Bhakti is, has a separate qualification. Right? A separate qualification. Sometimes that of a higher order that has a separate level of rules and regulations. So everyone is qualified according to their qualification. Krishna, people can follow one process. So just try, Jay, try to develop faith in this. There is nothing higher than love of Krishna, nothing higher than devotion to Krishna. And there's only one qualification that is desire to hear. But of course, should hear from proper person, then you can get the good result. Any questions? Any questions from anyone?
I have a question. Yes, sir. Desire and um, greed. So they are the same thing. And the materialist has desires and greed. They so have so the much desire and greed. What so does the, the spiritual person? Everyone, the soul is made of desire. No one can escape desire. Like in Buddhism, they try to say that no desire, but that's impossible. Because we believe the soul is made of desire. Desire is not bad. Nothing wrong with desire. But what you desire, that will give good and bad. Is a knife good or bad? Is money good or bad? Use it for a good thing, it's a good thing. Use it for a bad thing. So desire is neither good or bad. So, we, <coughs> But material desire should try to give that, but spiritual desire, don't give that up. Don't give up greed. <coughs> Anything else? What if your greed is fluctuating every day? What about it keeps doing? And after every day here, can, can you pass me tissue? Every day I have to hear. Mm. That's why our, because our intelligence is weak. So always should be in with a superior person. Then intelligence will not go anywhere. Like our gurus in Vrindavan, you see, did he know? No desire. <coughs> no, desire. no matter what happens, any disease, any problem, but intelligence is fixed. So you always stay with someone like that, then you're a little bit, you can be saved from yourself. <laughs> Any questions, Jay? Ready? So try it. We're here for like a month. If you don't understand, it means some fault in my presentation. There's not fault in this. So if you go and don't understand something, this is my fault. It's not the fault of this thing. So come again and again and here. Okay. So this material creation has been designed by the Lord so we can <coughs> continue enjoying ourselves. Like a jail. Months, huh? Like a jail. While the government builds a jail. Mm. Necessary for a certain class of persons. So why the material creation is here, Jay? For those who are forgetting Krishna. It's doing a good job, right? Look at everyone. <laughs> so why God made the material world? No need for him. So those souls who are not interested in fully serving him, they come here. But can be rectified. If you realize I made a mistake, then can be rectified by this hearing. Sound fair? Or you want to stay here forever? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any last question? Jai, no question? No. Yes, this philosophy is terrible if you're here. Because it means material death. I remember I was first, I remember as a new guy, I was listening, I was going, I remember clearly, clearly you know, I have little thought bubbles. Yeah, yeah. I was listening to all this and my thought bubble was, what the hell is this? <laughs> this is death. <laughs> That's all I could think about in the class. This is death. Material death. Die to live. Shula yeah. Shula Maharaj said, die to live. It means die to this world, but live. <laughs> For some high. You cannot have both things, no? Like a fairy, and you cannot put your feet in both things. So that is our problem. We have some little attachment to spiritual life, but the material attachment also pulling. But there are devotees in this world who have both feet on the boat of Krishna. So we can be with them and hear from them and serve them, be humble. Then you can get it. I fully believe that you can get it, but you have to follow that. You have to be on the guidance, and that's not so easy because we have so many other desires. So that's always the class. But don't worry. Shiva Srinu said, Krishna must win. He gave an example. This is one of our gurus. He said, like the Allies, in the Second World War, right? They went to France, and they first they just captured a little beach. <laughs> that was their bridgehead. And then more troops came, more tanks and everything. So Krishna has made his landing in the ears. <laughs> So now I don't know what will happen when you walk out of here. But Krishna has made his entrance. He has landed. He has deposited something. And at the end of the day, he is the all-attractive. And at the end of the day, that is our eternal nature to be attracted to him. So one day, no matter how many obstacles we put up, one day he's going to defeat us. <laughs> and we're praying for that. We're praying for that. 
Okay, thank you everyone very much. Any questions, Levin? No questions. You come back again, Jay? Okay. Will you come back again? Don't wait, just here again and again. Here again and again. That's so easy. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Krishna, we always need Radharani. Without Radharani's mercy, no one can get Krishna. No one can approach him. So Hare Krishna is who? Hare means her. Krishna is second. <laughs> she is first. We have to pray for her mercy also. Even Krishna respects so much. So much Krishna. This mood we're talking about sounds so impossible, right? So difficult. But by her grace can get. Okay, thank you. Tomorrow night we're here for four or five nights, right? Today battery's a little down. We'll charge in the night time.